15 songs that are being shared on the new album. It's great. And there is a lot of atmospheres. It made me feel like you must have recorded about 30 or 50 songs. Yeah, you're right. There were there was probably another another side, another album we could have released. There's probably another ten. I often write a lot, but we don't we you know I don't think we've ever made an album and not released pretty much everything we recorded on it. Just it's just sort of usually because of money and you just sort of, you know, that's you decide on what you're gonna record and then that's it. A lot of double albums usually are a lot longer than this one as well. So it's like, I know it, like we were thinking about some of those sort of 90s double albums like Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness and these sorts of things, which I think had like 32 songs on them, which was just yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of insane. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this is, you know, in, in this in the scheme of double albums, it's quite a, quite a small one, which I liked really. I thought any more than that and it would start to drag or it would start to feel a little unfocused. I hope we landed on the right length. Well, I went down to the water and the ferryman said We are forever entwined at the partition between the living and the dead And with that I raised my eyes to the sky And I saw no limit of stars Every album has its sort of challenges, but um, none have been quite as difficult as this. There are a lot of a lot of different areas that this was an, an uphill battle in both the sort of the environment it was written in felt quite sort of yeah isolated and somewhat kind of hostile and we didn't have a record deal um i'd broken my wrist it, it just felt like a lot and the band was sort of like all spread out all over the world and sort of felt like it was disintegrating there was a lot of a lot of problems to sort out before this could be made the worst one sounds like a uh, break in a wrist. It was a scary one. It was, um, that was just in the few months sort of before all the, the lockdowns kicked in. So it was sort of the first tours that we canceled was were because of that as well, which was a hard thing to do. I guess it sort of, it coincided with a lot of doubt in my mind about whether this was still the thing I should be doing with my time. Was it still, um, worth while to keep writing these silly songs i don't know it, uh it was it was a real moment of doubt uh, that it coincided with so it was sort of like having it taken away from me kind of made me um want it more i have to say <laughs> no limit of I would say that it didn't help while surviving COVID to even think more about this big question. Should I go on writing songs? Should I go on performing? Should I go on recording songs? Well, yeah, I mean, I think it put my own little sort of pity party into perspective as well, you know. All of these tribulations seemed so insignificant compared to the other larger things going on. So, you know, yeah, it's, I guess, I think this album sounds a little, it sounds like that to me. There's a lot of sort of like macro and micro things going on. It's very intimate, but very sort of widescreen at the same time, which I guess makes sense when you're stuck in a small house, yeah. uh, thinking about, you know, life and death. It's sort of, it's kind of that's, that's how this record sounds to me anyway. Is that the reason why you used to avoid? I think so. I think it's definitely talking about that. And my partner got pregnant, you know, in, among, in amongst all of this as well. So I think when you're having a baby during a pandemic, it's obviously, you know, you're going to be thinking about those those things quite a lot, whether it's, you know, this is a world you want to bring someone new into as well. Obviously, that, that certainly was a thought that uh, came up a lot. Um, I think, like, I've always used songs as a way to try and process these things because it's obviously it's too hard to look at generally i find i find these things hard to really think about in my daily life so the songs are a, they're a kind of um like a form of digestion or something contemplation i don't know i don't, yeah. I don't know but uh, yeah again i feel very grateful to have had them through that time because i it was the only way i could try and make sense of anything just like my daddy did before me and like 
like my mother did for sure They did their best to try to warn me Just what awaits behind the door Was there a so-called moment of enlightenment when you decided, yes, I have to go on? Can you remember that moment? No, I, th I think it was a series of, of small encouragements. <laughs> I know the song Undertow, which is on the album, that was one of the first written, and that was written during that period. That, that felt very meaningful. It was sort of like the song was talking back at me. And I think like Tom Healy, who produced the album as well, was, was hugely encouraging. And I guess that was the upside of the environment it was created in was I was in New Zealand, everyone was sort of stuck here. Um, we had a lot more freedoms during periods of that than a lot of other places, so we were able to sort of go into the studio for little chunks in between the, lo the lockdowns and things. Yeah, Tom, who produced it, was very generous with, with his time and very encouraging. I guess we just sort of kept chipping away. Honestly, like, if, even when most of it was done, I was wondering if I'd put it out. We didn't, it wasn't paid for by a label. This was the first album that we didn't have funded by anyone. So it, it didn't matter as well if I didn't put it out. <laughs> I could have just kept it. Sing the cradle song now As the light fades around us And you breathe like the ocean I'm small in my arms You see it all in a moment so young and I'm cloudy. I hear a lot of people surrounding me who talk about the 80s. And I started playing people the records of Shriekback over the past few weeks in XTC. And yeah. your dad was in that, of course. How often do you talk about the music of your dad? Oh, there he is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, here's Shriekback. <laughs> here's the green one. Beautiful. This one? <laughs> yeah. That's his least favorite. He hates that album so much. <laughs> Your dad, by the way, is? One in the front there. Yeah, the bald one. Yeah, the yeah. bald one with the glasses, yeah. That's the one that's got Cradle Song on it as well. I remember your face As you cried for the first time The cold air of the world And the fierce light of day why did you want to redo this one? That song was always a real symbol of love from him, I suppose. He wrote that for me shortly after I was born and when I was growing up in New Zealand and he was in England. I'd often listen to that or just sort of, you know, read the lyrics or it was a, a, a reminder of, um, of his love, I suppose. When I was young, I'd often try and sort of, sort of get to know him through his songs, I suppose, which is quite strange. I feel like I know him now as an adult, so I've spent a lot more time with him, but I, when I was young, I'd only spent sort of, you know, bursts of time with him. So I was always listening to his music to sort of try and get to know him. And um, so there was something, there was something nice to sort of complete the circle by covering it with my daughter in mind, I suppose, as a sort of bit of a message, message in a bottle to her future self as well. I love the way songs are able to do that, to sort of reach across generations and through through time in that way. It's an amazing thing. Time is a miracle. Time is a birth. Time is a shadow. It sounds like a great sense of intimacy on this album, on this record. Do you hear the same sort of intimacy in it? Yeah, um, yeah I suppose. If it's definitely very direct. I'm, I've always written songs about me and my life, but I feel like it's sometimes been quite abstracted in the past, whereas now, like this one feels, yeah, a, a lot more direct, a lot less, um, 
veiled, shall we say. It all feels a lot more, a lot clearer. Um, which I think may just be to do with feeling a little more comfortable in my own skin than perhaps I did when we made the last album, certainly more than the albums before that. It always helps becoming father. Yeah, well, maybe, maybe it's that too. I mean, it's, that's had a remarkable effect on everything, just sort of reconfigured everything in my life. It's amazing, isn't it? I've never been through anything that's been so uncomplicated and pure, you know, it's just such a beautiful thing. It's all about diapers and feeding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's the next album. Time is the cry.